let's just cover this and we've already covered this quite a bit and everybody else has and justin you and i have talked about this because we've been together all weekend so if there's anything you want to add you can add it at the end okay so i've been listening very okay. diligently and trying to break this down this whole deegan uh, uh bike claim thing there were there were a lot of things thrown out right away there were a lot of people including myself that jumped down the throats of a of a bunch of the bunch of the industry people um and everything and uh so <clears throat> from what i've listened to from what i've heard from what i know from what i what i've what i've deduced here um, through reasoning. And I give a real big shout out to, um, Michael Lindsay over at vital. Um, he did a great job getting all the interviews of pretty much everyone involved. Um, Steve over at Pulp MX, he did a pretty good job of getting most of the people on to kind of talk to them. Um, there, ha there has been some investigative journalism. Um, now as far as it goes, like Michael Lindsay is the most, uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for here, Justin? He's the most, um, uh, middle of the road, uh, not, not, yeah. non biased, uh, person doing interviews. Um, Steve did interview everyone, but there was definitely a bias because he does get bikes from Yamaha. He is really close friends with a lot of these guys. Not that Michael's not, but I don't, Michael's just a different kind of friend with a lot it's a weird situation vitals vitals always done a pretty good job and even though guy b doesn't have as much to do with it anymore people over at vital that i've always done a pretty good job of staying neutral with things so i've had my comments about michael Lindsay in the past but i will say i do agree with your assessment i would say he's pretty middle of the road like now obviously there are guys that he's friends with more than others but because he has kind of been there done that other than being a and I do air quotes pro uh, he's been in the industry for a while. So he kind of knows the ins and outs. So yeah, I would say that he's probably been the most neutral of anyone in this whole situation, in my opinion. Yeah. And, uh, and like I said, I thought he did a really good job. He's got a three part series where he interviews pretty much everyone. Um, so go check that out. It's over on their YouTube page and uh, let us know in the comments what you guys think. So like I said, I've listened to this on every single side of the coin. Um, I've listened to all the Cooksey stuff. I've listened to all of the stuff from um, Johnny. I've listened to the Vital stuff. I've listened to all the stuff from Steve. I've I've broke this down in my mind a gazillion ways. I've tried to read between the lines with everything. Um, so what I'm going to kind of do is go through and give like a breakdown of who I think was involved, what was involved, and then... Um, uh, and then we'll, we'll just, uh, you know, I'll just final thoughts it here, um, not to spend, you know, like hours and hours on this. So first point I'd like to make, number one, I'm sick of people, of the, of the people that were involved asking the kid, well, why are you claiming the bike? Okay. We all have agreed. It does not matter why he's claiming the bike. If he wants to roll that thing it like out in the middle of the road at Loretta's, take a shit on it and light it on fire. That's his fucking prerogative, okay? If he wants to claim that bike, it does not matter what he wants to do with it. It is therefore his bike. He can claim it. That's the first thing. <sighs> I have that in big uppercase letters. Like, why are you doing this? Who gives a fuck? It doesn't fucking matter, okay? Mm -hmm. He wants to spend his 17 grand. He wants to buy the Star Yamaha bike. If he wants to fucking blow it up with Tannerite, he can. doesn't fucking matter. Anyway, okay. So uh, Don Donnie Lutz, is that how you say his name? Uh, Donnie Lutz, yeah. Yeah, Don Donnie, Lutz Donnie Lutz from Yamaha. I don't really think that guy was involved in this in any major way whatsoever. Um, in listening to interviews, if you guys have listened to him, he, from what I understand, did send uh, the motor out to um, uh, the kid. His fuck, I don't have the kid's name written down here, and it's escaping me right Brandon now. Brandon Schofield. Brandon, Brandon Schofield. Schofield. They did send the motors out that they said um that he was gonna get uh he did even say in the interview that like yeah the whole sending him to the to the goat farm to ride the star bike might have been overstepping his boundaries a little bit so we don't know if that's gonna happen um but i don't think he had any influence in making the kid not claim the bike so he's off the table tim cotter as much as i do not like this guy and justin you and i had an extensive conversation about this last night we mm -hmm. also don't feel that he really did anything wrong, wrong. There was a couple things. Okay, he should not have been in a room alone with Brian Deegan and the kid. And he openly admits that. And, in fact, even the AMA guy, uh, Birkin, um, yeah. admits, too, that, like, yeah, we probably need to rewrite this rule that you have to be an adult 
aka 18, or have an adult with you in order to claim a bike, which I think that rule will be changed at least to that by next year. So there were a few small mistakes made, but as far as convincing this kid not to take the bike, I also don't blame him. Um, now we kind of get into, um, oh, and, uh, and Brian Deegan. I also, or here we go. Let's let's do this. So, uh, uh, Birkin, um, from the AMA. Uh, what what was his name? What's his first name? Mike Birkin. Mike Birkin. Um, he didn't have anything to do with the kid not taking the bike. As far as I'm concerned, he uh, did everything by the book the way he was supposed to. Um, yeah, he. I I don't put any fault on him. Um, I also, another thing, I do not put any fault on Brian Deegan. I mean, there are people out there that are going to, you know, scream and yell, okay? The, he is, his, his major concern from what I gather in all this was someone trying to say that they were cheating, which it's, for anyone out there who is saying that they were cheating, it's a fucking mod class, it doesn't fucking matter. The two rules are you can't change the bore, you can't change the stroke. And to that extent, who gives a fuck? Loretta's has always been run what you brung. It, 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 that's a way of life. If you don't understand that, then you don't understand racing, period, and you probably shouldn't be racing, okay? So I understand Deegan's concern of like, look, dude, we've worked really hard to build out this YouTube or this internet following and everything, so, like, I understand his frustration. I understand why he was mad. I understand him wanting to ask the kid and to, to make sure that this isn't what the kid's trying to do, you know. Um, but, like I said, as far as, as far as I can tell, I don't put any blame on Brian either for the kid not taking the bike. Now we're going to get down to the two linchpins in this whole thing that I think is what caused this. And we'll never know the full truth. But this is what I have deduced from listening to all of this. Number one would be Matt Walker. Matt Walker is, and I've never met the guy, from what I can tell, a hot-tempered piece of shit. Um, <laughs> that's putting it mildly. He, there, I've listened to several interviews. His story never lines up with anyone else's. His story doesn't really jive there's a lot of people that are kind of downplaying the fact that he went off on the motor builder that he was fucking yelling at the kid all this shit and to be completely honest matt walker was the trainer of this kid okay what i want out of someone who's on my team whether it is a a trainer a motor builder a a chassis guy whatever I want you to have my back. No matter what decision I'm making, even if you don't fully agree with it, I don't want you yelling at me telling me how stupid I am. From what I've gathered, Matt Walker went balls out yelling at this kid, telling him not to do this. Um, so I think that was the first major linchpin in all of this. Um, the other major linchpin, and this is the one that I have not heard an interview from yet, that we've only gotten small snippets of they've talked to so-and-so and and said this, would be the dealership in Canada um, that has, uh, that that sponsored Brennan. Um, They, from what I gather, talked to Matt Walker before Matt Walker even talked to the kid and was like, we don't want this to happen. And if you listen to the Burkeen interview, Burkeen says that the dealership came to the AMA office and said, we don't want this to happen. We do not want this to happen. They didn't want their name tied to it. They didn't want it to happen. So I believe those are the two linchpins that caused this whole bike claim thing to really boom, pop off and go the way it did. I don't blame Yamaha. I don't blame Star Racing. I don't blame Brian Deegan. I don't blame AMA or MX Sports. It's literally, I think it comes down to whatever was said between the dealership and the kid's dad and then the way Matt Walker went about it. And I think those are our two major linchpins that caused him not to get the bike and to drop the claim. And now from what I understand, now there is a little caveat here with Brandon himself. Um... And this is one thing that I'm like, dude, you really need to get out in front of this because you're making yourself look bad here. So he keeps going out and saying, well, they took the bikes back. They took the bikes back. So my understanding is his deal with 
the dealership was only to have the bikes until the Walton race, which was last week or what the week after Loretta's, whatever you want to call it. So from my understanding, he was going to have to give those bikes back after last week anyway. Now, he's out there saying, oh, they took the bikes back. I don't have any bikes to ride, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. Okay, that's fine, and they did, and you're not lying. But from what I understand, that was the deal from the start. So they're not really – now, did they choose not to continue the deal? That's maybe – I haven't really heard anything about that. Um, But that may be a thing. I'm not really sure. So we'll we'll have to see what comes of that. Um, But all in all – what this comes down to is this comes down to a trainer not having his kids back and then it comes down to a dealership um also panicking about the whole situation which the dealership it's like what the fuck do you care like this is the stupidest thing i've ever heard if you don't have in my opinion if you don't have balls for something like this to happen and you don't think your dealership can fucking continue because you think that this is going to cause them it first off any and and they said this on pulp any any uh, sales or marketing person that would get a call that says, hey, this kid claimed one of our race bikes at a race, which is a legitimate rule. We're going to pull the 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 dealer license for this dealership in Canada because of that would laugh so fucking hard at the person making that phone call, it would be ridiculous. There is no way they pull a dealership fucking contract because some kid claimed a fucking race bike and they sponsored that kid. No fucking way. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. It's it. I mean, it is so dumb. And then, like I said, then you go to Matt Walker and personally, honestly, if I'm any of the kids that train at the Moto X compound under Matt Walker, I leave right now. My trainer should have my back with my decisions no matter what the fuck I'm doing. And when it comes down to something like this, there is no way that you should be, if you want to calmly tell me like, hey, I don't think this is a good idea, but it's your decision. But if you're screaming and yelling at me that this is stupid, you should not be doing this, fuck you, I'm out. And again, I'm out of that fucking facility. This guy, from what I understand, doesn't have a great rep with things like that, like, it sounds terrible to me. So I don't know. That's my breakdown of it. That's the final update, the the ending, the closing, the final chapter of this Deegan bike saga. As far as I'm concerned, Justin, do you have anything to add to this? No, man. I mean, we talked about this a lot on the way to the track on Saturday and I pretty much, you know, we're both in agreement with a lot of the stuff like Yamaha, MX sports, AMA, whatever, like Donnie, Mike, Tim Cotter, they were just basically going in and protecting quote unquote, their brand. Like they didn't want, they want, they wanted to be on the right side of things early. They wanted to get their voices out. I do agree. It's a little ridiculous and there's already some plans in place to change this rule as far as next year and going forward. But they were just protecting themselves. Like they didn't want to, you know, they wanted to have their first comments before anybody else or before Brennan. Um, as far as Deegan's concern uh, it is what it is like, you know, he, he was like, Hey, you know, I don't, I don't want us, you saying we're cheaters or whatever, but yeah, as far as Matt Walker's concern, I've had, I don't know Matt personally. I've met him a few different times, but I've, I was around when he was racing. He's, that's just always been, he's kind he's cocky. He's pot tempered. Um, the dealership, as far as Canada goes, yeah, I don't really understand why they thought this would affect them. Um, nobody's really going to give a shit like, Oh, you claimed Hayden Deegan's bike. Like, look, Hayden Deegan may be super popular, but it's not like he's super fucking popular in Canada. Like nobody really gives a shit. It's nothing's going to happen, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, all I know is, is that if everybody is really concerned about this whole rule and we talked about this and you know, every other people have said the kind of the same thing, like, Hey, this rule shouldn't be in place. Like, you know, the only thing I'm upset about, and I've said this a million times, and I don't care who it is, I don't care if it's Bobby Regan, I don't care if it's, you know, somebody, Yamaha, whoever, like they can say, oh, we didn't have any unobtainium parts. Like, look, that bike may have not been a Justin Cooper or Nick Romano bike, but there's still some parts in there that not just anybody can get. 
And the thing, in my opinion, is is that if everybody's worried about, hey, somebody claiming the bike, then you know what? You guys need to go in and strong arm AMA and MX Sports and make the rule not a thing. You know, that's that's your guys' problem. But as far as as far as anything else is concerned, yeah, Yamaha, you know, Deegan, MX Sports, AMA, like I don't really put them at fault. Um, I I think that basically they didn't bully the kid, but obviously it's kind of one of those things you don't know what you don't know. He's a 17 year old kid, never had to deal with a business transaction, um, and that's basically obviously what it is. We talked about this as well. And like I said, it's not like they lied to him, but they probably use the advantage of, hey, we know some things that you don't. But as far as like anything else goes, no, I mean, I don't know. Th- this whole story has gotten way out of hand. I'm, I'm kind of sick of hearing about it. I'm sick of hearing about the bullshit from the Deegans. I mean, not them personally, but I'm sick of hearing about the he said, she said is what it like. Look, if we've learned anything about this whole thing is, is that you – need to change the rule if it's going to be that big of a thing moving forward. That's that's all there is to it. Like, we just need to fucking change the rule. You know? Like, so, yeah. I, I'm still, I feel bad for Brennan because he is going to kind of get not blackballed. I think that's too strong of a word. But I think for the rest of whatever he does in his career, he is going to be known as the kid that tried to claim Hayden Deegan's bike. If this would have been Ryder D, nobody would have gave a shit. But because Hayden Deegan has such a following, you got the fucking diehards that are, you know, up his ass and they're going to be well, you know, why, why'd you do it? Why'd you, why'd you do it? Wouldn't it matter? Like, you still wouldn't have beat him. Well, yeah, no shit, he wouldn't have beat him. But it doesn't matter. The rule's in place. If he's got $17,000, it doesn't matter where the money came from. It should be should have been his bike. So I just, I've said this before, I feel bad for Brennan because he's going to be getting looked sideways at any race he goes from here on out. Um, and that's just kind of all there is to it. Like, you know, I mean... I think everybody's kind of coming to the same conclusion. Now there's going to be some people out there that still think Brennan's lying or whatever, but I don't really know what you could say he lied about. Like what I just, I don't, I don't, those, that's the still thing I don't understand from the people that have made comments. And it's not a lot. It's, it's few and far between that have made the comment, but there have been people out there who are like, well, you know, I don't really know if Brennan's telling the truth. What, what do you think he lied about? Like what, what, what do you actually think he lied about? Because it's not like he said anything that's a secret. Everybody else is kind of pretty much backed up what he said or what he did, I should say. So I don't th- – that's the only thing that I'm confused about. As far as everything else goes, I think this needs to be put to bed. I think it's done. I think it's been too big of a deal. Like this shit has been going on for a long time, but I stand by my comments that if this wasn't Hayden Deegan, I'll be real honest with you, we probably never heard about this. We really, really wouldn't have. We would have never heard about this. Yep, 100%. 100%. Um, okay, let's move on from that. 